Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 328, going over the top eight legacy decks from Eternal Weekend. Eternal Weekend is one of the largest legacy and vintage events here, the largest in the States for sure, and one of the largest in the world. The Eternal Weekend website over at Card Titan is a little bit light on information. I couldn't find anything except the deck list there. No text write-ups, that type of stuff. If you know of really good coverage on this event, please let me know. I've scraped things together from several different sources and have been watching some of the videos, but as far as text goes, there's very little out there. Before I get into the top eight, I've got an honorable mention here for somebody who's contributed on the channel before. Greg Mitchell had a top 64 finish with a crazy combo control deck that he calls Miracles of Science. This is a hardcore control deck with some win conditions that are just over the top. And one of the reasons that I like this deck and that I like Greg's ability to take current archetypes and make them better or more interesting is some of the odd cards that are in here. Predict is being played a lot right now and it is wonderful card advantage. I tried playing it for a while in Rug and had a lot of fun with it tricks wise, especially being able to filter things that you didn't need and gain decent card advantage. Split Decision is another interesting addition in this deck. Split Decision acts like another counter spell in this deck and helps you win counter wars. It also doesn't have the disadvantage of having to pitch a card the way that Misdirection does. Nyari is also in here, who I've been brewing with in Legacy and like it a lot. This is a very interesting deck because it not only has some fun one ofs but it also has your traditional counterbalance way of locking people out and then a show and tell omniscience win it also has fire minds insight in the sideboard there's a cunning wish board there's just a lot of stuff going on with this deck definitely if you're looking for something interesting to play that is not on the easy side but very, very competitive, I would check out Greg Mitchell's deck. As many people predicted, there was at least one copy of Miracles in the top eight. Miracles has been a mainstay in Legacy for a long time. Miracles is the type of deck that people are definitely going after when building other decks, though. There were a lot less Miracles in the top eight than I had expected. The things that really jumped out at me from this deck is the three copies of Predict. Predict is a very strong card. And then the sideboard Moat. Moat is a very good way to help deal with the Eldrazi. And it's unfortunate that it's a reserve list card because a lot of people are not going to be able to pick it up to help deal with Eldrazi in their local stores. Let's take it aside here before I jump into the next decks. Think for a moment and try to figure out what card was played 28 times in the top eight for this tournament. And the answer is planes. We really need to ban planes. Planes are taking over Legacy. They're all over the place. But if you're going to play planes in Legacy, definitely play APAC planes. I mean, who doesn't want a kangaroo or the Great Wall of China for their planes? These are the best looking planes. Yes, there were three copies of Death and Taxes in the top eight. Death and Taxes is a serious tier one deck and is doing extremely well. I'm going to talk a little bit about what has happened with Death and Taxes recently because they've picked up some new cards that give them a lot more flexibility. Thalia is in all of these decks as a four of. She is wonderful and she helps hate on the Miracles decks, the Brainstorm decks, and combo decks like Storm. Stoneforge Mystic is also in all of these decks, so they're very, very traditional in that particular piece. As we quickly look at the third deck, we're also seeing the best removal out there, Swords to Plowshares, across the board in these. But what's really interesting about these compared to some older versions of Death and Taxes is some of the sideboard choices that are out there. Banisher Priest, Veteran Armor. Veteran Armor I particularly like because of its ability to deal with Dread of Night. Gideon is very solid and Wiltleaf Liege is another really good option there. These decks are also running somewhere between one and three of each of these cards. Recruit of the Guard and Sanctum Prelate are doing extremely well in Legacy. These are wonderful cards. 
I would definitely add them to your death and taxes mix. Learning what to put the prelate on is a little bit of a skill. You really need to study your opponent's decks and figure out what your best options are. I saw a prelate the other day on six against Miracles with a Mother of Rune in play. That stopped their Terminus cold. Knowing what to put prelate on is something well worth spending some time investigating and looking at for each deck in your local meta or the top decks for recent large tournaments like this one. We did see a Delver deck in the top eight. I was expecting to see two myself. The four color Delver deck that we saw is technically four colors, but it's really more like two and a half and a half. It's predominantly a blue black deck with Deathrite Shamans, Delvers, Gurmag Anglers, Snapcasters, and True Name Nemesis. Yes, two True Name Nemesis in a Delver deck. This is really a sign of how dominant Death and Taxes is. True Name Nemesis is a seriously difficult card for Death and Taxes to deal with, especially since many of the builds are currently running very few copies of Council's Judgment. We've got Abrupt Decay, Daze, Lightning Bolt, Ponder, all of those standard cards are in here, but notably for a four color Delver deck, there's no Tarmogoyf here. Tarmogoyf is sitting on the sidelines in favor of creatures with more utility like Snapcaster Mage and True Name Nemesis. Outside of the True Name Nemesis that I just mentioned, Sulfur Elemental is a very solid addition in this sideboard. It's a classic way. It's a classic way to attack Death and Taxes. And Painful Truce in the sideboard is another solid card to help you with card advantage in some matchups. The deck that I was expecting to do extremely well at this tournament only put one deck in the top eight, which is Eldrazi. The Eldrazi horde is alive and well in Legacy. It is not destroying Legacy, but it's changing the focus of Legacy. And as you look at this deck list, you definitely need to see how many of these creatures have serious problems with Moat. The other thing about this deck is that we've got some new cards in here along with old cards. Ether Hub is made it in as a four of. Chalice of the Void is clearly there. Cavern of Souls is one of the absolute best cards out there for playing against control, and we're seeing things like All is Dust in the sideboard to deal with mid-range decks. I'm a little bit surprised to see the All is Dust. It is very difficult to cast in the current Death and Taxes environment, but it is a solid board wipe if you could get it off. Now we've got the winning deck from the tournament, which is which I would call Turbo Depths. It's called Eva Green Depths here. It is a super fast Dark Depths combo deck, and it is a deck with a little bit of discard, four Thought Seizes, two Inquisitions, and a Duress, a lot of combo enablers. The cards in this deck are designed to go off as quickly as possible. Chalice of the Void, which I would expect to be main deck, is actually sideboard, so it's really honed to go after decks as quickly as possible. The moving of Chalice of the Void to the sideboard may be a response to death and taxes. If you are on the draw, Chalice of the Void is pretty rough against death and taxes because they can often drop a Ether Vial, turn one. There's some fun tech in here. I particularly like the Sejeri Step. It is a great way to keep your giant monster alive. We also saw three copies of Not of This World. I talked about it a few years back the first time it made it into a Dark Depths list, and it is wonderful. Into the North as a way to search out Dark Depths or even get your basic lands if you need it is very interesting here. And a Ghost Quarter also. Crop Rotate is an incredible way to go grab whatever you need. Overall, I like this deck a lot, and if you like to win early with 2020s with a combo deck, this is a deck well worth checking out. To find the new hidden gems in Magic the Gathering, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Special thank you to Jeremy and Tyler, who have recently joined as patrons. And until next time, choose the cards wisely.